We're here at the Fantasy Sports Trade Association Conference with Peter Shanky, who is chairman of the Fantasy Sports Trade Association. Thanks for joining us here on CNBC. Great, great to be here. You know, thanks for being here. So tell us about what's going on at the conference today. Obviously, the industry is having a lot of news this week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's obviously an interesting time in the fantasy sports industry. A lot of uh, legal chaos, I guess you could kind of say. Uh, but the you know, industry itself is, is doing great. We've had more uh, consumers than ever, over 57 million people playing the game. We've seen growth. They're playing more games. They're spending more money. So the industry as a whole is doing very well. But obviously, we've had a lot of uh, off-field issues, I could say, to use, a sports t to use a sports term. It seems like the lawyers might be making more money than any of the companies right now. Is that true? Well, uh, the lawyers are definitely making a lot of money. But, um, you know, the companies, you know, generally in our industry, we, we, you know, we have the FSTA has over 300 members, including companies like ESPN, Yahoo, uh, NFL.com, a company like my own, Rotowire.com. Um, and those companies are all doing well. People are playing the games. Um, Daily Fantasy Sports obviously has grown tremendously, and it has a lot of uh, legal issues but um, that's growing as well so the, the fundamental dynamics of the, the users and the playing and the industry is doing really well and we just have to get through some of this legal uh, chaos and uncertainty that's happened in the last few months. How much of the 300 company membership is daily fantasy versus traditional fantasy? So there are about 90 members or so that were daily fantasy sports operators of some format with a game or a contest and um, and so you know, that number might go back a little bit. I think that, that it was going to be hard for all of them to survive, and some of this legal uncertainty has sort of hastened that process. But there's still a large number of companies. There's still a lot of interesting plans, new ideas. And, you know, it's just a couple of years ago that no one even really knew who DraftKings was, for example. So, um, it, you know, some of these companies that are coming here with new business ideas and new models could be the, a big player in the, in the fantasy space in, in no time. You get the sense that there is a tech bubble because obviously so many of these companies have venture capital funding or their startups, they rely on the funding. Is there a tech bubble that we keep talking about? Well, I don't know if it's a tech bubble, but certainly the legal situation that we've had where everything has been called into question as far as our industry has made it very hard for our companies and startups to raise money. Um, and some of that might be a byproduct of other venture capital stuff that's going on elsewhere. And that's one of the reasons we're going to as many states as possible to seek legislation that clarifies that fantasy sports and, uh, is a game of skill and is legal to remove any doubt. Um, and so what, that, what that's going to do is it's going to make it easier for our companies to raise money, to get payment processing, to, to work with other vendors. And so that's what we're trying to do in New York and the state, uh, you know, across the states. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.